Hi everybody. Today I'm going to give you a presentation about seed treatment solutions for optimum oilseed rape crop establishment. My name is Simon Goertz. I'm seed technology manager at NPZ Innovation and the Rapool Seed Technology Working Group. So here the Rapool Seed Technology Working Group was founded in 2012 by DSV and NPZ plant breeding companies joining forces to cover the aspect of seed apply technologies. There, DSV and NPZ responsibilities and synergies are shared along different working areas. First, seed applied insecticides, fungicides in uh, chemistry and biological configuration are tested as well as seed applied soil conditioners, biostimulants, which are becoming more and more important and seed applied technical additives such as polymers and finishing powders for the optimum recipe development. And last but not least, the seed physiology aspect for seed, optimum seed safety and compatibility with uh, the seed treatments that we apply to our seeds and genetics are checked to make sure we get the best combinations. So some key facts. Every year we are um, running field trials with 1,500 yield plots at over 10 locations in our seed applied testing series with a new milestone system now ongoing for over four years. And uh, there we separate between a, a screening series with new innovations which are tested first and then the best advanced to a marketing series where they're combined with the market standards to get the best products for launch. So, so we're uh, ca uh, capturing over 15,000 annual data points from the field. Further, we are also undergoing continuous regulatory review with the fertilizer, fertilizer directives, labeling instructions to define especially soil conditioners at the former legislation and biostimulants at the new. Besides, the regulatory guidelines are the 1107 for plant protection products and the 1019 for biostimulants for abiotic stress tolerance and nutrient efficiency. So this is our testing network. In the testing network you see um, the main locations which are four in Germany, one in Czech Republic, one in Hungary, one in Romania, one in Ukraine. And um, in, at that network, we've been capturing data points on field emergence up to yield. And those two years, multiple locations data are shown in that graph. So here you're seeing the correlation, which is R square 0.6. So very high correlation of the actual field emergence in percent at the early stage of development of the plants in autumn and the yield data. And um, you can see that according to the field emergence, the yield level grows. And um, showing this further on the field emergence of the plants per square meter, you can see that we have uh, discovered three different groups on um, yield levels and field emergence. So the first group is the widest spread the second group is a bit more narrow and the highest group on top yield level is probably the narrowest. And there you can see that we can uh, see three groups clustering in the data pool. So from 10 to 30 plants per square meter, we are um, at 30 decitons per hectare or below. At 20 to 35, we're at 40 or higher. That's the middle group. And at 30 to 40 plants, we're getting at that top yield level of 50 decitons per hectare. That was seen in two years data of trials and it, this is ongoing. So we are already uh, curious what this year will bring. So summing up, there's a clear correlation of the number of plants per square meter during field emergence and yield in seed treatment trials. So according to the topic of the presentation, Optimum crop establishment also 
is an important factor for guaranteeing yield safety. So here you see the yield correlations of the campaign 21-22. So at that growing period, we see that in the course of the eight locations, two locations in Asendorf and Groslusewitz were showing the strongest correlations to yield. So at first, emergence 10 to 11, leaf stage then 12 to 14, and the plants per square meter are all positive correlations. As far as development of biomass at early development, also 12, 14 and 15, 16 are even higher correlated to the yield level, as well as development before winter and development after winter. So I'm going to give you a spotlight in the following slides on those two locations. And at the further locations, you see that the correlations were not there simply because there was less stress during autumn. Or uh, at some locations, there were also negative locations. That is due to the fact that um, there was a very high drought stress present that made the establishment and finally the yielding very difficult. So here is an example from a high yield location in Hohenlied, which is in northern Germany. It was sown on August 21st in 21. And the picture you see is taken from October 5. So roughly uh, 40 days after uh, sowing. The trial was sown at 40 kernels per square meter and the average emergence was 82% with 33 plants per square meter. You see overall very good development and this is all one hybrid. So we're always testing on one hybrid, one seed lot on all uh, eight locations. And here you see that there's barely a difference between the entries. Coming to Groslusewitz, which is only 150 kilometers further east in the northeast, close to the city of Rostock, same picture, one day after, same sowing date, same hybrid, same seed lot, same seed treatments tested. Here you see the situation is far worse. So we only get average emergence of 35% with average of 40, 14 plants per square meter. And you see that there has been a high levels of stress and the plants are much smaller. And this is due several factors. So these are the plots one month after November 11. You can see there has been some regeneration and you see several seed treatments. And at that location, we had the highest product differentiation due to these high stress levels. Those high stress levels were um, intensive uh, precipitation. So very strong rainfall directly after sowing, generating a soil crust. And then um, also uh, early um, pest pressure by cabbage stem flea beetle, which were causing those scappy plots. And uh, right after there was a drought period, which uh, also uh, followed by cabbage root fly um, larvae, which were decimating further plants and a cold and wet October. So coming to the entries, Integral Pro and Integral Pro plus Comcat and Lumiposa we're showing clear differentiation. So with the seed applied insecticide, we get additional protection against uh, cabbage root fly, um, generating a higher early development score and 14% more yield. The seed applied fungicide with a biostimulant was not matching up to the performance of Integral Pro and Comcat. That was likely to the, due to the drought. So you can see emergence was lowered significantly as well as early development and yield in the end. The SAF plus Lumiposa was generating better results, which uh, shows the clear uh, superior performance of the seed applied insecticide Lumiposa. Going to Asendorf location, which was um, uh, sown later, we had the highest product differentiation uh, with regard to severe damping off, so soil-borne diseases such as Pitium and Fusarium. We measured that by testing 
the DNA of the soil. And there we saw that there was no Rhizoctonia present, but uh, high levels of Fusarium and Pedium species, followed by cabbage root fly pressure as well, and afterwards cold and wet October. So here you see that the SAF plus biostimulant was superior to Integral Pro and Comcat, simply because uh, Integral Pro does not have that broad protection as a synthetic fungicide. But the yield levels in their end were not so high differentiating and together with Lumiposa seed applied insecticide we had again superior yield and also uh, superior autumn development and this as well in the combination of the seed applied fungicides and the integral pro between fungicides there was also some differentiation here, another location from this autumn in Saxony-Anhalt at October 20. This was also sown quite late and here I'm going to show you that uh, the, without foliar application of insecticides under severe pressure of cabbage stem flea beetle, the seed applied products are coming to their limit. So to the left and to the right you see other field trials which, has be, which have been um, applied two times at least with a foliar insecticide spray. In the middle, the seed treatment trial has been only applied once and that was shortly before in order to rescue the trial, uh, being able to harvest in the end. So there was only an average emergence of 36% and 14 plants per square meter. Here you see the trial in October 20 with the entries Integral Pro, Integral Pro Lumiposa, seed applied fungicide plus biostimulant and the seed applied fungicide plus biostimulant plus Lumiposa. You see that the plots have regenerated quite well after that foliar spray, even during the extreme drought that was happening before sowing. And um, the precipitation also uh, helped to get that uh, recuperation. Again, Lumiposa was showing the best autumn development. And Integral Pro was a little bit better than the seed applied fungicide due to the proliferance of um, the bacillus uh, pushing the plant through the drought period. So here's another location at Kuyavi, Czech Republic. Sown also September 2nd with 40 kernels per square meter. And this picture was taken one month after in October 5, in 22. The emergence was 61%, only 24 plants per square meter, but it was hardly hit by cabbage stem flea beetle and the cold and wet conditions um, was further hindering the plant development. So again, one month afterward, you can see the regeneration of the plots. And um, here you see that Integral Pro and Lumiposa was uh, much better than the months earlier. So they had uh, average emergence of 46 and 48 percent where the differentiation was not so big. But um, with addition of Comcat biostimulant, the plants were much more dense and had better emergence, almost 20 percent and also higher early development score at 15 to 16 leaf stage. Thanks a lot.